Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got Jeff Clark with me in the second installment of a recap of some of his presentation at the Vancouver Resources Investment Conference by Cambridge House. Uh, it was a big hit, and so we wanted to bring a little bit of that to our audience here on YouTube. Jeff, how are you doing? Very good, Mike. Glad to be back with you. Good. This is all based on the coming silver price shock. So uh, let's continue on. What have we got here? So my thesis, Mike, is the silver price shock is going to be based on, on many things, but on one thing in particular, and that is the size of the silver market. And this, this kind of shows that. So global wealth in the world, is, for one example, is $230 trillion at the end of last year, according to Credit Suisse. Meanwhile, you have all of the above ground investment grade silver is about 3.4 to 3.5 billion ounces. We don't know exactly how much there is above ground in, in coins and bars. And this is just coins and bars. Uh, this is not jewelry, uh, religious objects, uh, you know, industrial use silver, anything like that. This is just coins and bars, physical silver that we know is above ground. You multiply that times $18 silver and you get about $63 billion. Sounds like a lot, but what that means is that global wealth around the world is 3,650 times bigger than all of the investment grade silver that's currently above ground today. Yeah, so a tiny fraction of that, uh, a tiny, tiny fraction of that trying to flow into silver would cause like $150 silver, maybe higher. Yes, that's the point. That it's just such a small market that it won't take much money coming into it to greatly impact the price. So what I did here is I, I wanted to represent global wealth with a big stack of dollar bills. So let's pretend that that um, stack there of dollar bills represents all the global wealth that's currently above the world. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small silver coin at the bottom of the, the slide that represents silver, and I'm going to make it to scale. So you can see just how much bigger the global wealth is. Well, that first stack isn't enough, so I have to add another stack. So there you can see there's two stacks now, but there's still no silver coin. Let me add another stack. So there you go. This is all global wealth. Uh, still no silver coin shows up to scale. So I'll add another one. And there you go. It's really getting crowded, but there's still no silver coin that's going to show up. So let me just throw a whole bunch of stacks in there until we get to the silver coin. And there you go. You can see it on the teeny tiny dot there in the bottom left of the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that represents all the above ground silver that we know exists in coin and bar form. Well, the stacks of dollar bills represents global wealth. And that is to scale. And so you can see just how small this market is and just how much money, how much currency, excuse me, is sitting on the sidelines that could come into this market and just really blow the price up. So here's just one example of when this has occurred. And you've talked about this before yourself, Mike. This is what happened to the price of silver uh, when Warren Buffett, just one fund, they speculated on the price of silver back in the uh, mid-90s. And you can see what happened uh, yeah, when he started buying the, silver. The Buffett blip, they called it. The Buffett blip, right. Yeah. Well, the blip was 84%. It was an 84% rise in the price. And this is just one fund. This is just one fund that actually decided to enter the silver market. So the point is, what happens when there's more than one fund that wants to enter the silver market? And by the way, this also occurred during what the miners call the nuclear 90s, because the silver market was, was dead. They couldn't make any money. The price wasn't rising at all. So imagine what could happen if the silver price really starts to move and uh, these funds want to move into the market. Just, you can yeah. just imagine what could happen to the price. And so the first strategy I gave the audience in Vancouver was you need to buy physical silver because this is going to be a situation where we're going to have an astronomical rise in the price. And here I deal with some of the objections. You know, at some of these conferences, they want stock picks, right? Because they're supposedly more exciting. Isn't buying physical silver boring? And no, it's not. Silver is not boring. It's beautiful, as you and I know. And I actually handed out a coin to someone who had never held a silver bullion coin in their hand before to someone in the audience. 
And uh, it was quite something. You could see that uh, it really meant something. He knew he had money in his hand. Yeah. And actually, Mike, I gave him a silver bull. It was one of your silver bowls that you designed that has your motto on the back. So that's a great place to start for someone who doesn't actually have any physical silver. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Some people say it's, uh, you know, impractical, but no, it's actually more practical because you have actual money in your hand. And if you want to, uh, if you need some cash at some point, well, if you only have gold, <clears throat> you have to sell a whole ounce of gold or whatever form of gold you have. Whereas if you just need a few hundred dollars, you can sell just a, a little bit of silver and get what you need without having to sell a whole ounce of gold or a whole bar of gold or whatever the case may be. So it could actually be more practical in the kind of environment we see ahead. Right. And your next category is risk. And uh, this is one, you know, I've always talked about, uh, you know, if you've got physical versus stocks, Stocks can have a, a mine collapse or management problems, uh, a scandal. Uh, they're in political, political jurisdictions very often that are not very friendly. And if they turn socialist, then they take the mines away. Uh, permitting problems, uh, there could be uh, things like the e, an EPA. A, so, you know, they could have a pollution problem that uh, causes a, a government shutdown. Labor disputes, uh, all of those things. But when it comes to risk, there's one thing that I don't see in your, um, uh, you, you know, in this slide, is that silver has a floor under it. There's a cost to mining gold and silver, and they're down near mining costs right now. Now, a lot of silver comes to market as a byproduct, as you know, uh, the majority of it. But in an economic slowdown in the world, when people aren't using as, as much copper for all the homes that they're building in China, for all the wiring and plumbing, and if they're not using as much uh, zinc castings or lead for car batteries, then they're not digging up as much silver and all of that uh, byproduct supply goes away. And the responsibility uh, falls on the shoulders of the primary silver producers. What percentage of primary silver producers are turning a profit at this point? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. I couldn't tell you the exact number off the top of my head, but yeah, it's, it's, it's less than half. Probably most of them are not turning a profit even at 18 bucks when it was at 15 bucks, almost everybody was losing. And, you know, when I talk about, uh, turning a profit, I'm not talking about what they call the cash cost. I'm talking about the all in cost. Did the company turn a profit or not? <laughs> and most right. of the silver producers have trouble. Uh, turning a profit at this price. And so to stay in business, uh, it needs higher prices or lower production. Uh, and uh, this leads to things like high grading and all of the things that uh, also lead to far higher future prices. Absolutely. The point being with all this that if you buy physical silver, you have tremendous upside potential at much lower risk than you have right. with a mining stock. And so that's why yeah. I encourage everyone to start with physical silver. The physical silver cannot go to zero and it really can't go much lower than it is right now. I mean, you could see $15 again, or it's possible it could go to uh, 12 or 10, but it's not going to stay there. It can't stay there because uh, the, the, all the supplies vanish and uh, there's, there's no incentive to dig up more because it's, it's, they're digging it up at a loss. So you get mines uh, that, how many, there's been quite a few mines that were shuttered over the past three or four years, right? Oh, since 2013, when uh, metals prices plummeted, there's been yeah. many mines that have either been closed or they've pulled back in development or they stopped exploring and laid off geologists. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been uh, quite amazing what's happened over the past six to eight years. Okay, let's go on to the uh, next thing, profit. What, what do you want to say about that? Well, the issue there is, you know, some people that are really into stocks uh, point to, well, I could make more in stocks. Well, you not only have a lot more risk, and a lot of them could go to zero, especially the explorers, yeah. but you're actually going to have more profit in a uh, physical silver than you know. And what I'm talking about here is, is sort of a double layer of profit. First of all, as the slide shows there in number one, 
with higher prices, where you're, it's more cash is going to be required in order to buy physical silver. And you can see in the little table there that a 15% premium on silver today is $2.70, but a 15% premium on $100 silver is $15. And so there's a lot more cash that's going to be required by buyers then than today. And that's where some of our profit margin is actually going to come from. And the yeah. second thing is, is you're one of the first people to talk about this, Mike, but we've had a, a significant rise in the seniorage costs that comes from the U.S. Mint and all the mints really for sovereign coins. And I did the calculation, and there's been an approximate 50% rise just in the senior reach cost from the U.S. Mint since you opened gold silver. Wow. Okay. And so as th that puts a floor into the price, and yeah. that drives premiums higher. And so the, the bottom line there, as I say, at the bottom is sellers are going to profit from both the higher price and the higher premium. And I can prove it. I was up at this same conference <laughs> Back in 2011, when gold and silver prices were really on the move, especially silver, and I took a tube of Canadian maple leaves over to a, an on-site dealer at that time, and I sold them just to see what I could get. And they paid me above spot. They gave me cash back that was at a price above spot. And silver was in a bull market, but it wasn't certainly in a raging bull market like you and I expect it to be at some point. But the... Yeah. But here you go. I was actually paid above spot, and I think that's going to happen again. And so owners of physical silver are actually going to make more profit than they think, and that's yet another reason why I think they should start uh, their investment by buying physical silver. Okay. So I think that'll wrap up, wrap up this section, and uh, we'll see you in the next section because there are some really big things coming. So thanks for uh, sharing your presentation with us, Jeff, and we'll see you in the next video. Very good. Thanks, Mike.